Thanks for joining us for another episode here on the Triad Podcast Network. We are talking with our certified financial planner. Her name is Jennifer Johnson from Three Magnolias Financial Advisors right here in Winston-Salem. We've recorded a lot of episodes about some of the things happening around our local and national economy. You can search through our archives and find topics on all sorts of things. And We're all still waiting to see when we can do our next follow-up episode on student loan forgiveness and and where things go there. Uh, The hearings have have taken place with the Supreme Court. Uh, We're expecting potentially a decision on that sometime in June. And so we'll we'll jump into that and anything else that that warrants um, some some dissection as as it relates to our 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 federal government and, and things that are happening there. But Uh, Today, we're going to talk about something pertinent to this time of year. We are in the month of April. We're in springtime. Uh, April, I did not know this, Jennifer, but April is financial literacy month, correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah. Which I, you know, I think every month is financial literacy month. (laughs) Um, But for the rest of the world, I guess it's, I guess it's just April. I don't know if that has anything to do with the tax tax deadline hitting us in April, if that's related or not. (laughs) That's a good point. That is a good point that maybe it's just, uh, it makes a lot of sense that it would be in the month when people have to file their tax returns. So, um, so, so today in this episode, we're going to talk about not just financial literacy, but maybe what it means if you are lacking in that department and, and, Maybe you do have some some shades of financial illiteracy. Mm-hmm. Um, what what is some what does some of the data say about how well people are educated when it comes to whether it's their own personal finances or or just the 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 education on the study of it itself? Yeah, yeah, I, I think the data is not great, right? I mean, I think almost any study, and there's there's a lot of them, would suggest that people make a lot of financial mistakes, you know, day-to-day mistakes, probably small ones that add up that we'll, of course, talk about today too, but it's costing us money, right? It's costing us money as as individuals, as families that, you know, of course, my passion is how how people can leverage their financial resources to, to do the things that are really important to them. And if there's things inefficiencies, you know, ways that, you know, things that are not serving you, you know, that's something I thought would be helpful to, for people to know. So I thought it was, might be interesting for people to, to hear some numbers, you know, about what the, the true cost is, you know, what it might be costing you, what it's costing our country. And then uh, if you're not sure if you're financially illiterate, we've got some signs. So we'll give you like a little quiz, I yeah. guess, and see. I'm I'm nervous about taking this quiz. <laughs> I I consider I myself yeah, I consider myself to be a financially responsible person, but I guess we'll we'll find out in, we'll in just find a little out. bit. Yeah, well, I'll give it to you. We'll see. I, okay. I, I think you're going to be fine. I don't think you have any reason to be nervous. And and if you do find that you're financially illiterate, we're, I'm going to give you like four things that you can do. Okay. Um, to, you know, to better improve that or to become more literate, maybe. Okay. Um, but first, let's let's talk some some numbers, because um, of course, you know I'm a data person. So I look, I looked up the numbers too, and I found um, this is pretty recent. This was from 2022, so really recent data from the National Financial Educators Council, which honestly I didn't even know existed. I think that's a relatively new new entity. There's there's a push to have more financial education um, in public education, so that may be that may be where this, this came from, but they studied 83,000 individuals across 50 states and it kind of surveyed those individuals, I should say, and they found that financial illiteracy cost each person annually last year, $1,819. So really? over $1,500, yeah, per individual, that's per person that they found. Um, which they have been around for a few years. Apparently, the study has gone on for for six years. That was the sixth year um, because the article I had read commented that was the highest number. That was the highest per person cost. So to your point, what does the data show? Or to your question about the data, you know, to me, if that number's going up, we're going in the wrong direction, 
right? Um, so, so I thought that was that was interesting to me to to learn because um, obviously we want to want to help people make good financial decisions, and instead we may be you know maybe making more bad ones. Um, so I thought that was interesting. So that that eighteen hundred dollars, and first of all, that that's a that's a pretty good sample size 83,000 yeah, people in all 50 it, states all that's a, that's a that's a yeah. solid sample size um and, and we're going to link this um so that you get, so that folks can check the resources yeah, and the sourcing and, and read some of this stuff we're going to link all of this in our show notes um so the $1,800 or $1,819 is that that's not just saying that's how much people had to spend extra that could be loss of of um Investment, uh, uh, could be, investment yeah. gains that could be yeah. uh, fees that are spent, right. or right. Uh, that's just an accumulation of how much money is lost, not necessarily money spent, but money potentially that was being prevented from being earned. That's Yeah, that's true. And I think it, you could, you know, if you really extrapolated that out, like, you know, not only maybe, maybe that was too much fees or interest you paid. I mean, what if you had invested that, right? I mean, so like there's really power in that because we've talked about before, you know, the the power of even small amounts of money consistently saved or invested um, over long periods of time. And, you know, a young person, you know, that's over $100 a month, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like if you, instead of, you know, instead of overdraft fees, which is one of the common things, we'll talk about some of the key uh, key things that I saw that really added up to a lot of money that costs us. But, you know, if you're, if that's something that you're just paying in, in fees or, or, you know, too much interest or something like that, I think if you could then turn and invest that, right. That's not even counting those lost earnings. Yeah. Yeah. That that's true. When you break it down, $1,800, you're right. That's over one, that's over a hundred dollars a month. Right. What if you could take a, an extra hundred dollars and put it toward retirement, put it yeah. toward your, your kid's college oh, saving plan, you know, yeah. just common, common investment opportunities for long-term growth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there were a variety of responses that people gave in terms of what they did or didn't do that, that, um, mm -hmm. that cost them these dollars. What were the most common ones that, that the study found that, that yeah. maybe people will, will hear and say, Oh, that, that's something that I do as well. Yeah, it could be. I think there are three big ones that I saw. Um, one was paying too much interest in fees. Um, so, you know, paying paying interest when you don't need to, you know, credit card balance or some other bill, you know, maybe you didn't pay on time and so you get a late fee or something like that. Um, this is actually from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So a different group uh, than the survey we mentioned, but they found uh, one of the most costly mistakes is credit card interest and fees, which credit cards alone, um, those fees and interest, I should say, cost Americans, so a collective Americans, $120 billion a year. Can you oh imagine? Oh, my goodness. That's oh, my huge, goodness. Huge number. And how many of us are there? There's, a, what, 300 million of us, you know, in the United States to have that number right. That's off the cuff. You know, I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that, listeners. <laughs> But that's a lot per person, you know. If you think about that, as as us as Americans, 120 billion dollars, you know. So that's a lot of interest and fees. So I think that's one, you know, one huge one. Um, maybe somewhat related to another. You know, speaking again of fees, overdraft fees, mm. which folks are probably familiar with what overdraft fees are, but they're checking account related fees. I guess they could be some other type of account, but I typically associate them with checking where, you know, you write a check, use your debit card, you know, and not realizing, oh shoot, there wasn't enough money in there. And the bank, you know, in an effort, I guess, to help you out, will cover that at times, but they're going to charge you an overdraft fee, you know, and those, those could have been pretty, pretty high from what I recall. I, you know, haven't seen that a lot personally. Thank mm -hmm. God I haven't seen that on a lot of client uh, bank statements. But obviously, seventeen billion a year in overdraft fees that we're paying—that's a lot, you know, and just overdraft fees. Yeah. Um, just just to fact check, you were pretty you were pretty right on. Uh, last census okay. was three hundred thirty one. Oh, okay. All right. Million. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so probably somehow, probably when we do our next census. 
Uh, it'll be somewhere in the 335, 336. We're, we'll get close to 340 yeah. million, but 300 million that right off the cuff, that's, I don't think I would have come up with that number just, <laughs> just on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's in there. It was deep. Right. But, uh, yeah. but that's a lot for, for our 330 million people to be racking up 120 billion, mm. not million, but billion in credit card interest and fees. So um, so like in our case, if like you and I, just the, the way the math works, like if you and I aren't paying any credit card interest, right. Cause we pay ours off at the end of the month. That means there's some poor souls out there paying a lot. Right. Yeah. So if you're yeah. struggling with it, you may like really be struggling with it and that could easily cost, you know, I could easily see that $1,800 a person, you know, with those kind of fees, if you're struggling with that. And that's something we've talked about before, on different podcasts, people that are really struggling with credit card debt and other debts. Yeah. I mean, you think about 331 million people, but how, what percentage of that population doesn't even have a credit card right? Uh, because they're too young or they just don't have yeah, one or they right. have a credit card and they pay their bills on time. You know, you're, you're probably eliminating half of those people. And so right. 120 billion each year over, you know, it could be, it could be 120 billion over, spread across 120 million people. That's true. And that's scary to think about. Um, I think that really illustrates uh, just how bad it can be with credit card interest and fees. Um, and you mentioned overdraft fees. Yeah. Um, how, how much How much do people spend across across our nation on overdraft fees? Yeah, yeah I was shocked. That's It's not as much as credit cards, but even 17 billion a year, oh. I mean, that's a lot, you know, and they're from what I recall, I mean, again, it's been a long time since I've, I've seen those, but it, you know, that if you, and you could probably could get in trouble using the debit card, especially when we've talked about dangers of like debit credit cards, right? It's just so easy to use it. You know, you're going out, you use it three or four times and you, you've been, you've been, you're negative now in your account. It's probably 20, $25 every time mm -hmm. they have to cover something. So that can really easily, you know, really easily add up, but it's still shocking to me that, across our, our great nation, we've, you know, we've managed to, to pay 17 billion per year in bank overdraft fees. That seems like a lot to me. That is a ton of money. That's a ton of money. Yeah. All right. So those are, those are two of the three that, that you wanted to highlight uh, common mistakes people make in terms of what's preventing them from being more financially literate. Uh, what, what's the, what's the third one? Yeah. The third one I was kind of surprised by is identity theft and fraud. Um, oh. so it could be, you know, somebody got into your bank account, somebody got hold of your credit card online or took out a credit card in your name. Um, but this is from the FBI. Uh, I commented that, that identity theft and fraud cost Americans. So again, us as a, as a whole nation, um, 6.9 billion for identity theft and 5.8 billion for fraud. Um, and certainly that doesn't necessarily, I mean, I guess we should say you don't have to be illiterate to be a victim of identity theft. Sure, correct. Um, so in fairness, you know, that may not be, that's not one of the signs necessarily that we're going to go over that, you know, that you're financially illiterate because that could happen to somebody that's being really responsible. But my guess is to, if you're not paying attention, you know, you, you may not realize right away, this is just my speculation, but you know, if you're not monitoring your spending or your your bank accounts, your your credit card statements, you know, if somebody is, you know, is has gotten in there, you know, it may rack up a lot. Um, it may yeah. rack up more than what you know your bank or that credit card is willing to to pay. So, so that could be a really painful thing. You know, people that don't check the credit reports um, every year, or so things like that, that you know, where you can kind of get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not one that I would have uh, thought of either. And, and I think that is important too, that I, identity theft is not something that necessarily is in under your control. I mean, there are preventative True. measures you can do to reduce the risk of it. Um, but credit card interest, overdraft fees, that stuff that right. you can prevent. That's um, right. That's right. The yeah, third one, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's financially illiterate if if they're a victim right. of identity that's theft. So yeah, right. I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I think um, maybe that might be another good topic or ways to prevent that, right? Sure, um, sure. Uh, because it's, I mean, there are some things we can do, right? And I think 
we could definitely do a whole podcast on that, um, you know, ways to protect yourself, but you're right. There's only so much you can do, right? I mean, you can probably mitigate the cost of it though, which yeah. is probably where it came into why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau mentioned that. Correct. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's say, and maybe this is getting into the, the, the aforementioned quiz here, but let's say somebody's hearing that and they say, credit card interest, overdraft fees, identity theft. I've that I've not been affected yeah, by right, any of those. Right. So does that mean I am financially literate? Right, so right. Let, let's let's find <laughs> let's out. See. Let's see yeah, what what yeah. are some of the, what are the signs that you think um could could yeah. that people should pay attention to to make sure that they they are strong in the financially literacy financial literacy, literacy category. Or to say a little bit in this it is, yeah. alliteration <laughs> a little bit. But uh yeah, with but it's 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 fun to say as elf would would say. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So I think it's, you know, you could look at that and be like, well, you know, nobody's sold, you know, I've not been a victim of fraud. Right. And I don't have any overdraft fees, so I'm sure be good. Right. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So okay. some of these were um, these signs and these aren't exhaustive. Right. But these are just maybe four questions to ask yourself. If this is you, then I think there's some room for improvement. Right. Um, and here's the first one. So, um, should we quiz you, Adam? Do we want to use Let's you? go. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. We're worried. I know. I can see you're nervous going into this. <laughs> okay, Adam, do you live paycheck to paycheck? Paycheck to paycheck, meaning that you're not saving any money. What comes right. in is what's going out. What's going out? You can't, you know, if you don't get paid on time, bills aren't getting paid. Uh, no, I do not. All right. There you go. So, if you answer yes, listener, that's a sign, okay? Now, we know in different life stages, you can't help that, right? But, you know, that could be a sign. So um, so that's, that's question number one. Do you live paycheck to paycheck? Okay. All right, here's number two. I know the answer to this, but I'll just, I'll ask you anyway. Have you signed up for your company's retirement plan? Yes, I have. You have, all right. So you're, so you're good so far. Like okay, two for two. Two for two, two for two. But if you're listening and maybe, um, you know, again, you, you haven't paid any credit card interest, you know, or, or overdrafted your bank account, but you hadn't signed up for your company's plan when you could have and you're missing a match, maybe, then that's a sign. You know, maybe you could you could improve your, you know, your financial literacy, your financial know-how, right? So can I ask a, a question about that? Yeah. Absolutely. Could could somebody answer yes to that question if they say, I haven't signed up for my company's retirement plan, but I do have my own retirement plan because it's a better, it, it's a better yeah, option for me. I can say, yes. I think uh, okay. fair, yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe like a better way to ask that is like, have you start, started saving for retirement? Right. And if the answer sure. is yes, then I think you can get a pass Okay. on that one. Um, and if the answer is no, I think you look deeper. Right. So, yeah. so you're good so far. Okay. Um, here's the, here's the third one. And I don't know the answer to this. So we can edit it out if it's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, nope, nope. We'll keep it in. I'll be honest and I, and I will be very upfront about, uh, about my flaws <laughs> if, if necessary. All right. Have you ever been turned down for credit? You applied for a credit card, you applied for a bank, uh, a car loan, and they said, no, thank you, Mr. Witten. Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> good sign. Good sign. I don't think you will. I don't think you will be. So, uh, um, and last one. I know you know this because we did we've done a whole podcast about it. Do you understand how interest works, meaning for you or against you? Now yes, me. yes, I do. And I know a lot more about it because of the fact that I do these podcasts with you every month. <laughs> Shameless right. plug. Shameless plug to go back and listen right. to our previous episodes. But but yes, I I do know how interest works. Sure. Do it now. Can I can I sit here and say that I've never had to pay unnecessary interest? Oh, I cannot yeah. say that. Yeah. Uh, but right. I know how it works. You understand the concept. Like you know. Yes. You, it, and now I think back to credit cards, I believe there was a rule change to where now on statements they'll put on the front page if you only pay the minimum statement, you know, the minimum balance, the required payment, how long it will take you to pay it off. Yes. Like interest, you know, you'll pay. And I think that was probably like an eye opening for a lot of people that yeah. were paying what they had to pay and kind of kicking that 
you know yeah that that is required now by law when you um when you get your statements of anything that any any sort of debt or loan that you have yeah yeah you know it's interesting that third question about being turned down for credit really reminded me of when i i'm when I first became a financial advisor, you know, you're encouraged to just talk to, you talk to everybody, right. That, you know, see if there's potential for them to be a client. And um, I remember having conversations with folks. And one of the questions we were trained to ask is, you know, what is your most important financial goal or concern Mm -hmm. right now? And I learned if they immediately said, I want to improve my credit score, that that conversation was going in the wrong direction because, Mm -hmm. Every time that it seemed as, as when we when we dug into that, they wanted to improve their credit scores so they could borrow more. They had been turned down, you know, for debt because, frankly, they already had too much debt. But, you know, they probably were already paying a lot. And they were one of those individuals, you know, already paying a lot in interest and fees, you know, and wanted, you know, and just wanted there was their mindset of, instead of trying to, you know, eliminate debt pay that debt down, you know, they want, not there's, I mean, obviously having good credits, uh, we should all strive for that, but that was just something I learned probably about three to six months being in a financial advisor that when that was the answer, I kind of knew, knew their mindset. Yeah. And, and in that situation, you're, you're, you, you're trying to change the line of thinking from you're not necess- you don't want to necessarily be thinking how do i improve my credit score because like you said if if you're worried about the number of your credit yeah. score then it's because you're trying to get approved for something you're trying to get approved for uh, something else that's going to require taking out a loan that's and, right and 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 when when the focus should be let's let's make sure that you've got your debt in order right right you've got an emergency fund you know you're yeah. not running up your balances because in reality if you do those things usually the credit score takes care of itself correct right? i mean but what I, I i think that was the difference is if you were talking to folks that were you know already had been struggling with they've been turned down for things you know or they're paying you know really high interest on loans because they're you know they've missed payments and things like that that's just it was just very very interesting yeah, that's that is in, that is interesting to hear how the perspective is so important when you know you, I get what you're trying to accomplish and it's uh, and I appreciate that but the perspective that you're taking on it can can affect how what your goal should actually be. That's right. Yeah, it was just a totally different conversation. You asked that same question, you know, what's your biggest financial goal or concern and if they said, "Well, I've got 12-year-old twins." you know, we're not, we're worried we haven't put enough away, you know, for education. It was just a really different mm-hmm. conversation. They're more of like a savings mindset, right? They're more of, of you right. know, what do I need to be doing to, to put ourselves in, a, in a, a better financial situation? Not to say, again, credit scores, it's good to have good credit, but instead of, instead of borrowing more, it's, I need to put more away. So I think that's, Interesting. And, and there was just limited you could do for those individuals. Right. So which is like one one reason I think I've always been passionate you know, about educating people and helping them understand so they can make good day to day decisions. Right. And so because once once somebody's making good day to day decisions, you know, about their spending and, you know, sort of those kind of behaviors, then you can really help them achieve their goals. But if they're sort of sabotaging themselves, you know, by constantly taking out more debt and things like that. And then you're like, oh, there's not that much, you know, you can do a lot with that person that can consistently save that hundred dollars a month. But if they're going backward, um, that's tough. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, I think that that story, I think hopefully hits, hits home for people that may say to themselves a lot, that- I've got to, I've got to figure out a way to improve my credit score. Right. I, I think a right. lot of people ask, I mean, how many, how many commercials do you see on television about credit score, credit score, credit score? And, and right. yes, it's important, but I think your point about you can organically get there by mm-hmm. redirecting what your focus should be. Do the right things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. maybe like step one is just to be more financially literate, right? It's just yeah. more like awareness, more kind of knowledge is power. Yeah. So, so let's say that, um, 
somebody takes this is listening and they're answering these questions along with us and and you know maybe they are living paycheck to paycheck and maybe they they haven't uh, right. thought about retirement plans and they they do have a, a poor credit score um, right. and and their line of thinking is is maybe misguided what what can they do about it what are some resources yeah. that are out there that you would recommend to improve their financial yeah. literacy yeah i mean i think the the good news is today versus 20 years ago when i started as a financial advisor i think people have more resources today than they had then right i mean you you have well, one, there were no podcasts at that point, right? There was just the internet was there, but I just don't think it had, you know, had the same um, variety of information and good sources. Mm -hmm. so I think one, you know, is to be better read, is to really, is to really seek out information, you know, be that trusted news articles, um, be that um, books, you know, those sorts of things that you can read. You know, I have encountered folks that have gone through different different programs. You know, they've they've encountered like a total money makeover or something like that, um, and it's really made a difference in their life. So, so I think really, you know, one is to maybe be better read. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and, and I think to your point of, you know, the people that are the loudest aren't necessarily the ones that are yeah. the most accurate. That's right. I mean, so there's more out there today, right? And and so so I think the one challenge with that is if you don't have an advisor that you can go to, right? Like you don't have a source like myself, and, and you are navigating what's out there online. You you want to be a little bit cautious. I think about things that are sensational, um, that sound too good to be true, you mm -hmm. know, um, or the flip side like super um catastrophic or um you know um overblown so uh, so i'll often will have folks you know e either come in with you know oh my god what worried about like complete collapse of our currency for example um because of something they read um or saw or uh you know heard on even on some news channels so so I would say, you know, if, if uh, you do want to be a little bit um, discerning with what you read, like, you know, so your, you know, your path to, to financial security is often a long one. It's a game of inches. It's, you know, you know, slowly making good choices. It's not an overnight fix. You know, it's not a repair your credit by paying a fee. It's, you know, it's, it's deliberate choices. Um, it's saying no to things, you know, it's making those, those kind of, kind of hard decisions, if that makes sense. Very yeah. Unexpected. yeah. It's, it's like anything else. I mean, whether, whether people, I mean, we're talking every, every January when we talk new year's resolutions, it's, um, well, I want to, I want to get in shape and I want to eat better. It's not one meal does the trick or one week does the trick. Right. It's, it's a pattern. You, it's establishing a pattern of the, of the right choices mm -hmm. when it comes to your financial situation. And, and yeah, I mean, there, there, there are like, like you said, there are so many resources out there. Um, and, and I think people just always need to consider the source when they're doing that. Um, and we're not always saying that, you know, we, we're the only, you know, we hope you listen to us and we hope that you take some of this stuff to to heart, but there are a lot of other things you can do out there. But I'll also understand that things that you read on the internet and listen to in podcasts, it's very generic because it it, it it's stuff that apply, can only apply to um, a mass audience. That's and right. the only way to get the advice that really truly applies to you is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think so. I, I, of course I'm biased, you know, because of what we do here, but I, I, I think so. Now I think for a lot of people, they, you know, because maybe they're, they've dug such a hole, you know, they kind of need to get to a point where somebody else could even help them, if that makes sense. Like, so I think, I think there's, you start to do some of these day-to-day -day things right. And then get, get yourself to a point where, you know, you could seek out, you know, a financial advisor mm -hmm. and really start some goal planning, right. About, and then have the capacity to work, work toward those goals. So I, I think so. I mean, I think 
listen to podcasts is great, right? Mm-hmm. There's, there's plenty, there's a lot out there. It's almost overwhelming probably, but, uh, you know, definitely, definitely take in and, and, and you know, what's amazing is these things are even free, right? I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, like, you, you know, you would have to buy these or go to find your way to a library and open a card catalog and figure out where to go to the shelf. You know, now you can just Google it. So it's just amazing. Like, I mean, I do think you have to be a little bit cautious if they're trying to sell you a program or, you know, or it sounds super sensational, like kind of be careful of that, but just use those resources that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you'll listen to things and, and you'll just hear people that, that I think that's what we try to accomplish here is you will hear podcasters and, and writers, they'll, they'll just, they'll bring up things that maybe you haven't thought about right? and say, Hey, where do you stand in this particular topic? Um, have you thought about this? Have you um, whether it's investments or budgeting or cutting costs, all these things, those are, those are very, those are large topics that we discuss. And we hope that we just get people to think about things that they haven't considered before right. um, so that they are more in tune and paying more attention to, to what they're doing with their finances. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, th- I think that's really it. Like you, you kind of consume information, you know, go on, read, listen to podcasts, um, find good sources, but then you do have to turn. I think this is where you're headed. You do have to like turn to really looking at your own situation. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got to, you know, take some, take some effort there to, to really not just turn a blind eye. Cause I think it's so easy in our modern world with our paychecks are direct deposited and we pay for everything with plastic and, you know, you don't get a statement in the mail. You got to log into something. I mean, you can move through the world pretty blind. Mm-hmm. I think you not be aware of, you know, really what's coming in versus going out. What's what, where your money's going. And maybe a lot of it's going to interest and fees that, you know, you didn't really even realize. So I think really is to start, start dig deep in those things and then like set some goals for yourself. It may be to, you know, maybe goal one is just not to pay overdraft fees for right. some people, you know, that may be like a little micro goal that people could do on their own. Yeah. Start small and then become addicted to the feeling you get when you accomplish that one goal. Ah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Get, you know, and then, then once you're doing that, you move on to like, I'm going to pay down this credit, this debt or something to that nature. Like I could see people, you know, people doing that. And then even, you know, obviously I am a proponent of getting financial advice and, and it was interesting, like the same um, consumer protection bureau had released a study done um, and they, they actually, this is a little bit of a smaller study because they had to work with people one-on-one, but they picked a, some groups in a couple cities and gave, they gave some of the individuals access to a funny, what they called a financial coach. And then, the, you know, obviously some folks did not have that access. So, mm-hmm. um, so, so, and then they compared, you know, what was, what was the impact of that, especially related to some of the things we Discussed, and I just thought it was very interesting in that they found those that had access to a financial coach, and you could almost even say some of that I'm sure was educating those individuals, and some of it might just be being like kind of an accountability partner, you know, yeah. where like you know if you don't do the right thing, somebody you have to kind of answer to another human being. But you know, they found those individuals paid their bills on time, which seems like a small thing, but if we're paying 17 billion and overdraft fees, you know, so that, you know, that could be in interest and, and late fees, I guess, too. So they paid their bills on time. Um, uh, one, in one city, they found they, their savings went up by $1,200. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting. And I believe it was in Miami. Um, the debt went down by 10000 They paid down debt $10,000, which I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Scores improved. Um, They reported feeling more confident. So I just think there's, you know, a lot of benefits to, and and again, I think a a professional is great, but, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's more of a a well-educated, and I say well-educated, I mean like a well-financially educated, you know, individual in your life, you know, that can help you uh, see, provide some guidance and maybe some accountability too. Yeah. I also, I like the idea too of a, you know, certainly... Um, speaking with a, a 
certified financial planner like yourself um, is is helpful. It's helped me and and my family out tremendously. But an accountability partner, I like that. I think there's a lot of people out there that can relate to if you're going to the gym and you're trying to get in yeah. shape. I think everyone's heard of, or most people have heard of, well, I'm going to find somebody to do this with or a running buddy. Right. You know, right. like I, I, I want a running buddy to just someone yeah. that's going to hold me accountable to getting me up in the morning at 6 a.m. to go running before <laughs> getting ready for the day. Um, it's easier to do that when you have somebody to that's going to, you know, make sure that you're getting out of bed and doing it as well. If you're on your own, it's much tougher to become motivated. Yeah. And I think the same could apply here where, you know, you can be open and transparent with that person, with that other person about your challenges and what you want to accomplish and say, Hey, you know, did you this month, are you still on track to only spend $200 on eating out, um, right. going out yeah. to dinner, lunch, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I love the idea of an accountability partner with, with your finances. Yeah. Yeah. It could be somebody who, you know, I said uh, another financially literate person, but it could be somebody that's struggling with the same things, you know, yeah. so usually I like, go to the bar with, or you go shopping with or whatever. I mean, you set that goal together, you know, that we're going to do, we're not, we're, we're only going to spend X dollars, you know, and then, and then keep each other accountable. I mean, that could be almost equal parts to having somebody there to educate you on the decisions you're making, like the cost of it. Um, and just having somebody there. I also have had other people like do um, crazy bets. Have you heard of that? Where you say like, mm -hmm. okay, if I, um, you know, okay, if I, if I overspend or if I pay an overdraft fee, right. Then I have to like give money to a charity I hate or something like that. Or, um, or, you know, make us make a, an embarrassing social media post or something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sort of some of those, you know, like I think I heard um, somebody was talking about getting up early and, and running, I think. And it was something was scheduled to go out like a, a post, like a, a, a social media post or something like a tweet about, um, you know, something silly. And then, if you uh, yeah, it, you know, it was going out. So that was what got them out of bed to run. run. That is a great idea. You schedule a social media, an right. embarrassing social media post to go out at 6.15. Right, that's right. And if you don't wake your butt up at that's 6 right. a.m., yeah, this yeah. is going to go get posted. So you that's better right. get up and cancel that post. And then hey, while you're up, let's let's do let's our run. run. I yeah. love that. I yeah. love that idea. Yeah, I, heard, I can't take credit for that. I heard that somewhere. That's, that's I can tremendous. Work with overdraft fees, you know, like that would trigger <laughs> <laughs> to go out but uh you know you could you could people can be creative right yeah. let us know what you do <laughs> okay yeah i like that um that that'll be something i use on my kids when they get older and they're on social media uh, maybe, maybe i'll just keep them off social media for their all their entire lives that'd probably be more that'd probably be healthier but Good luck, un yeah. unavoidable <laughs> okay well jennifer this was great thanks for uh helping everybody become more financially literate um, still tough to say with the end, ending L in financial <laughs> and the starting L in literacy. Um, but no, this this was good. And uh, if, if there's still time when we release this, maybe there's a day or two left, uh, go listen to our tax episode from, from yeah. last month if you need some very, very last minute tips uh, before your returns are due. So uh, Jennifer, enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.